Okay, several of you had some domain and range questions in Delta Math, so I'm going to try to help you with those. Uh, this problem is saying domain. Remember, domain is x value, so I'm talking about where it's located on the x-axis. Domain and range tell you very little about the shape of the graph, but they tell you a lot about the location. I'm also going to work through range on this as well, which is going to be the y value, just because similar graphs can come up in the range section. You'll have one section of domain, one of range, but I'll use the same graph for both of them. If I'm talking domain, I'm talking about x values. So the smallest x value on this graph is right here, and the largest x value is right there. So my x values start at 3, and then they stop at 6. In this case, there's a clear starting point, there's a clear stopping point, and I actually can touch that point. So that means I'm going to have a bracket at 3 and a bracket at 6 for my domain. Now, for my range, I'm looking for y values. So for range, I'm looking for lowest points and highest points. When I'm looking at range, my lowest point is there and also there. They're both low points, seem to have a y value of 0. Remember with range, you're talking about the y value. So the same point I called 3 and 6 looking at the x value, when I'm looking at the y value, I'm going to use the 0 value. And if it helps you, you can always write the coordinate of the point as 6, 0 and realize I'm using the x coordinate for domain, the y coordinate for range. Range starts at a y value of 0. And then the highest y value would be about right here, which looks close to about 1 and a half. On one they gave you, you probably wouldn't have to guesstimate like that. But that gives you the idea of that being about one and a half up. Once again, it actually does touch zero. It actually does touch 1.5, so I use brackets. I use brackets when it actually can touch. If it's a point on the graph or a closed circle, I use a parenthesis if it's a open circle or a point that's not on or a line that it's getting close to without touching. We'll try another example. Okay, when I'm looking at my domain, once again, domain is x values. So if I look on this side, the smallest x value I get to is negative 7. You can see the graph gets really close to negative 7. Now sometimes I have students tell me 3, which is an x-intercept and important, but it goes past 3. They'll say 6, but it goes past 6. What you're looking for is on a graph like this, is it's basically like there's a wall at negative 7. It's almost like if you've ever spilled a bucket of water and it splashes up and kind of piles up near the wall. It's piling up near the wall, which is at negative 7, but it can't go past the wall. So that's your boundary. Your lowest value for x is negative 7. On the other side, it keeps going and going and going, and it actually goes all the way across the graph. Sometimes students will tell me 9 or even 10, but it doesn't do that. It keeps on going past the graph, so that's actually going to keep going forever to infinity. Now, on this one, it does not actually ever get to infinity, so since it doesn't touch it, that's a parenthesis. And also, it gets really close to negative 7, but never actually equals negative 7, so that is also a parenthesis. So that is my domain value. My range values. On this one, I'm going to be talking about y values. So my y value, um, my lowest y value down here, I'll do range in red this time. My lowest value is going down, 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 down. There is no limit. It's going right off the graph. So my y value is a negative infinity. Uh, it goes up on this end, and it goes up, 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 up. And you notice this one, it's going up gradually. It's not actually running into a wall like the x value did at negative 7. It keeps on gradually going up. So although it's not going up fast, it is going up to infinity. And your range would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Or you can say that is the same thing as all real numbers. I'll abbreviate to avoid having to write out that whole thing. But all real numbers would be your range. We may try one more. Okay, this graph has two pieces, so I'm going to have to do a domain and range for each piece. On this piece here, the domain start, uh, it goes all the way off the graph, so the domain is going all the way down to a negative infinity. And then on this side, it kind of runs into a wall, it gets past zero, but it never gets past one, so it'd be one, and once again, it doesn't touch either point, so a parenthesis for both of them. This piece of the graph, it gets stuck at 1, it gets closer and closer to an x value of 1, and on this end it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's going to be infinity. Whenever you have two pieces, you are going to need to use that little OR word before it and put an OR between the two pieces for the greater to count it right. Same thing in the awful case, you have three pieces, just separate them with an OR.